Щоденно у відеоформаті говорять представники наших делегацій, делегацій наших країн. У нашої делегації завдання чітке – зробити усе, щоб відбулася зустріч президентів, зустріч, яку, я впевнений, очікують люди. Presidente Ford's Doug Herbert joins me on the set uh, for more on the situation there. Doug, another bout of negotiations between Kyiv and Moscow getting underway today. Previous rounds saw no tangible progress, no ceasefires. Uh, the question is, is do we think at this point a negotiated settlement is at all possible? And the, the extension to that, can Ukraine even survive as a, as a state? Uh, those questions are intimately connected, intertwined. Uh, look, I've been saying all along that each side comes to the table with vastly differing definitions of negotiations. Until now, a negotiation from Russians, Russia's perspective had to, were terms of essentially surrender, capitulation, ultimatums, as Ukraine saw it, uh, that the Russians would settle for nothing less than full control. That is what Putin himself has said he wanted of Ukraine. Now, you're saying there were hints of progress. Putin himself said, I see positive signs last week. This is sort of a, an artificially created narrative, in a sense, because wh what did we really mean by that? Well, there was this glimmer of hope uh, that perhaps, uh, you know, Ukraine could change its constitution, make itself neutral, neutral in the sense that it wasn't aligned with either the West or didn't have any aspirations to join uh, NATO. It could recognize the independence of the eastern states, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, in the pro-Russian rebel hands. Um, and it could also recognize that Crimea, annexed by Russia, in 2014 is a part of Russia. These are all things that Ukraine uh, has never said it is going to do and has no intention as of now of doing. Now, the question is, will Vladimir Putin, in the face of whether he denies it or not, uh, is a battle plan not going according to uh, to uh, what he had perhaps hoped for or expected, a quick seizure of Kiev, uh, being able to, to take control and change the government? That's not happened. Will Vladimir Putin be more inclined to strike a deal? If, if I were a betting man, I would say, and sometimes I am, uh, I would say that no, these negotiations are not going to be any more successful than the so-called negotiations we saw last week, week, which, let's not forget, began with an intention merely for Ukraine wanting to set up humanitarian corridors to evacuate people from the cities being bombarded by Russian shelling and artillery. Uh, yes, about 130,000 uh, civilians have managed to get out of some of the worst-hit cities, uh, but by but, but, and that's a big disclaimer, uh, hundreds of thousands more remain trapped without food, water, electricity, everything really dwindling. They're still not able to get out. These humanitarian uh, corridors have been a patent failure so far. So I don't think that these are real negotiations. I still think that Putin is the one who ultimately is the arbiter. He makes all the decisions, Jeannie, not the negotiating teams below him, and they know that. Uh, he's not going to stop at anything short of full control of Ukraine. And the sooner people realize that, the sooner we'll stop having to continually say negotiations, negotiations, nego negotiations. Ukraine's not going to sign a blank check for Putin conceding away. Um, all of its land. Now, Doug, over the weekend, we saw Russian missiles land for the first time in the westernmost part of Ukraine, very close to the border of Poland, a NATO member, an EU member. Are, are we seeing a more dangerous escalation in this war now that, that so many in the West are fearing could lead to a bigger conflict? Well, of course it's an escalation. It's an escalation from the way we define escalation. Remember, uh, go all roads in this war lead to Vladimir Putin, and what Vladimir Putin says is essentially what is happening, in quotes, in this war. So any escalation escalation, by Putin's definition, is not the fault of Russian forces. Any escalation is the fault, by definition, of Ukrainian provo provocateurs, Ukrainian fascists, Ukrainian Nazis, led by Zelensky. So just start from that. So when you ask me if it's an escalation, from Russia's standpoint, nothing that has happened in the war so, so far is the result of Russian aggression, Russian artillery, Russian shelling, Russian strikes from the skies, despite the clear evidence showing to the contrary. Uh, hitting that, uh, that, that base in Yarahiv, basically, which was a training center, yes, until recently recently for American troops, but also a peacekeeping center, uh, hitting that was a clear signal because uh, Russia warns that any weapons being supplied from NATO countries, as they have been, into Ukraine are legitimate targets. That is, the weapons convoys, the convoys carrying those weapons, and presumably the Russians believe that that base is a place where those weapons are going to be brought and stored, even if they haven't said it explicitly. Uh, so what you're essentially having said is that, yeah, the, the implicit threat here is that those convoys are legitimate targets even when they're moving through NATO territory because it's only 12 miles from the town, the, the base that was struck to the Polish border. Those convoys are moving for many, many miles, dozens, hundreds of miles before they get to that border. So the hint, and that's what, here's the scary part, is yes, they would be legitimate targets 
even if they're on NATO territory. So the real uh, threat here, I guess, is not just escalation beyond a long slog, a long war, Jeannie, is that by accident or by design that NATO countries willy-nilly get sucked into this conflict against their expressed will, and it becomes a conflagration that no one can control. Doug, thanks for that. France 24's Doug Herbert.